Go. Do you have a prelude? You had some prelude mu music to play? Oh. Never mind. Okay. Well, we'll restart. We'll, we'll figure that out. I thought you had a prelude. Never mind. Okay. Hey, everyone. I, I'm completely confused at my own direction, so don't worry about that. Uh, welcome here to Trinity Lutheran Church, Pastor Jacobson here in Sioux Valley. Um, we are going to be pre I'm going to be preaching today on Romans chapter 7, talking a little bit about the um, tension that we have between um, our old Adam and our new Adam. That's going to be what we kind of cover today. Um, also, uh, happy 4th of July. I know that uh, obviously today being the 4th, fireworks last night, we could see them over at the house, so that was a, a good evening. Uh, but this service will be uploaded for tomorrow, uh, July 5th, on YouTube. So if you're unable to sign on to, to Facebook or if your friends aren't able to be on Facebook, it will be available hopefully by tomorrow morning on YouTube. With that being said, we'll go ahead and begin uh, and our, our bulletin can be found online at uh, trinitysv.com. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak together the words of the intro. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. 
us, gracious Lord. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, and mounted on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together the gradual. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The epistle and basis of our sermon today is from Romans chapter 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law. That is good. So now, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, 
but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day is hymn 707, O oh, that the Lord would guide my way.
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant us peace. Peace from the world and its violence and warfare. Peace in our hearts, our troubled souls assuaging. Peace when hell itself assails us when t with temptation and doubt. Grant peace, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but lately, I've been getting pretty tired. And I'm not saying that I'm getting tired necessarily from lack of sleep, although there are those days, those nights. Nights when, of course, my kids keep me up or I have a lot to ponder and think about for the day ahead. There's times when I just get tired because I stay up too late. But I'm getting more and more tired, actually, from the bombardment of news and politics and division and strife and violence. I'm tired of the constant struggle. I'm tired of war. I'm tired of hearing that another one of our brave men and women have died in another country in a place that I've never heard the name of for a cause that I'm not entirely sure why it's there. I'm tired of the constant pol politics of who is going to win this next race and why they need to win it. I'm tired of the political drama that's plastered all over the TV and Facebook and Instagram and all sorts of media, it even arrives in my emails. I really just, on some level, don't even care anymore. I'm going to vote the way I'm going to vote, just like you are as well, and that's going to be the end of it. I'm just done. I'm tired of the coronavirus. I'm tired of wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Wear gloves. Definitely don't wear gloves. Death tolls rising, death tolls shrinking. Stay locked in, go outside, open up the economy, close it down. And every bit of news that changes day in and day out, quite, quite, quite frankly, I just don't care anymore. I'm tired of angry and bitter and resentful people. I'm tired of overzealous opinions on whether or not as a pastor I should have a beard or wear jeans or not. I'm tired of crime. I'm tired of all the different wars that we have, the war on gangs, the war on drugs, the war on racism, the war on everything and anything. I'm tired of protests and I'm tired of riots. I'm tired of stealing and arson. I'm tired of the stupidity of it all. I'm tired of men leaving their own wives, families being broken and splintered apart. I'm tired of the stupid promises of this world that never come to fruition, but always seem to tempt me as if I could actually, maybe, possibly do something to change anything. I'm tired of flag burnings and mob rule and kneeling and constant demand for apologies for things I have had no part in. But really, that's not the worst of it. There's more. If I'm going to be completely honest, and I'm sure you would feel the same way if you were going to take a deep and honest and close look at yourself, I find that I am mostly, maybe completely, tired of myself. Because I have been blessed beyond measure. I have seen the good, the true, and the beautiful. I have great friends and outstanding family. I have a beautiful wife and lovable, if not crazy, kids. I have nice things, a place to live, people who care about me. I know I have been given more than I possibly could ever deserve. I have seen, read, studied, and known the truth of God's holy word. I know the commandments by heart. I have seen the goodness and truth in all of them. 
I have seen the word of God active and alive in people's lives. I've seen an atheist come to faith in Christ Jesus. I have watched the Holy Spirit enlighten the hearts and minds of many a person as they gain deeper spiritual understanding and insight from the scriptures. I've seen people move to generosity that I could barely muster up in my own heart. I've held a dying man's hands whose last words were, isn't Jesus, isn't Jesus wonderful? I have seen faith that could probably move mountains. I have seen faith that I could scarcely believe that has reduced me to tears on more than one occasion. And yet, time and time and time again, I turn away from it. I have turned into myself on more than one occasion out of cowardice, covetousness, envy, anger, and more. And I don't understand it. How on earth could I act against the truth, goodness, and beauty I see all around me? How on earth could I act unfaithfully in the midst of so much faith all around me? How can I turn away from those things that I know are good in God's law as if they were never meant for me or as if God did not see or did not hear? I don't understand. The good that I want to do, I do not do. In fact, I do the very thing I hate. The things I am so tired of so upset about, so worked up about, and things that I contribute to in my own ways. I exaggerate to make myself look more important. I use people. I daydream about fame and money. I think more of myself than of others. I have my own lusts and desires. As we heard from last Sunday's reading, there is no law or a good thing on this earth that sin will not twist and turn for its own device into the grossest sin and idolatry, the worship of self. I desire to do what's right. I truly and honestly do. I really love truth. I really do. I really love beauty and goodness. I want to remain in God's presence always. And yet still I do not do the good that I know I should do or the good that I know I want to do. Instead, I do the very thing that I do not want to do. The very thing I hate and abhor in others. I'm addicted to sin as much as anyone else. And there's no excuse. I know what is good and right. Wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He will. He will save us from ourselves. Indeed, he has already done so. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God has done what the law has required. Not in my flesh, but in his sons, who I have been baptized into. He has suffered to death and beyond, taking my punishment and my place for me. Out of love, out of an unending mercy that I could never fully understand. He has claimed me despite me. He has given me new life in the midst of death. There is no other hope. There is no other comfort. It is all here in Jesus. There is no other way around the addiction to sin we are all found in. The only answer is blood and death. Namely, the blood and death of Jesus. 
But for now we struggle. Now we fight. Now we do wage war against the flesh and against the unholy things of this world. But there is a day that indeed will come for those who trust in Jesus. That when Jesus has returned and our flesh has been risen and reunited with our spirit, that this all will pass as well. In Jesus' name, amen. We confess our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We lift up our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, knowing that He indeed hears us for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, Worthy to be held and reverenced by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine, and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. And mercy bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ. And help us to fight the good fight of faith, that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools, so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity, by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, from unrest and riots, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and the needy, the comforter of the distressed and those who are in sorrow. We also ask that you be with those who have requested our prayers, especially Linda, Leanna, Phyllis, Joyce, Linda, Charlene, Duane, Lois, Dawn, and Steve. Except we implore you our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, 
together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift upon you his countenance and give you peace. Amen. Amen.